Okay guys, so for our next troubleshooting video that some people have been asking me about is they're having a problem with their opponent being able to underhook their other leg that isn't doing the stapling and being able to pull themselves underneath to either the shin sweep or the X guard. So, as I'm in this position, this leg comes too close up, Kevin underhooks it and is able to chamber it up onto his shoulder and then as I have to start elevating my hips, he's able to get into an X guard or be able to sweep me immediately. So one more. From this angle, as I'm here, Kevin underhooks, pulls me into X guard. So getting your leg underhooked like this is a problem, but it's something that we can easily prevent. One, this is gonna be dependent on the attributes of you and your partner when it comes to length, is making sure that we're not posting this leg too close up to our opponent's hips, shoulder, and head. So as I'm here, if this leg is there, look how easy it is for him to reach to it. He doesn't even have to open up his elbow very much to be able to underhook this. I need it further back. It's the same kind of idea like if I was knee ride and I post my leg up like this. He underhooks it, crap. It's also not in a good position to generate meaningful base. I'm driving into Kevin like this and I'm driving weight into my hands. I need my legs back here to be able to drive myself forward. If my foot is higher up or even closer here, it's not going to be able to generate maximum force in the direction I want to. Keep this leg further back here. Try not to have this knee open up. If my knee is pointed down like this, if Kevin tries to reach underneath, it's much harder for him to access the leg as a lever because I have it as a frame turned down and it's strong. Also, we can think about angling of our hips. And so depending on the length of your opponent, if you don't have the ability to put your leg that much further back, we can look at leading more with my right hip and starting to turn myself, rather than being completely straight on parallel to Kevin, I turn myself slightly, just like 45 degree angle. Just that now, naturally, the left side of my body is going to be angled away from Kevin, so if he tries to reach for my leg right now, it's not there. Inevitably, as we're trying to pummel and stuff, especially as we're bringing this leg up to try and circle inside, it's going to get closer, and so we just got to be mindful of the fact that we're bringing our leg into that range where it's susceptible to being accessed as a lever by his arm and just be ready for that. As Kevin reaches for it, like some of the other troubleshooting stuff we've talked about, he is not using his arms as frames. Some of the biggest problems you're going to be dealing with is your opponent just pushing you away, never letting you properly float. But if Kevin tries to start reaching underneath, his arm is going to have the ability to get underhooked. And so as he starts reaching for it, I start moving into chest to chest connection to start looking to pass, or even if it's just at an earlier stage where as he tries reaching for it, I'm making sure I'm blocking this. Obviously I have weight into my hands, but I'll just make sure I'm shifting weight into one hand here to block this, or as he tries reaching underneath, and you don't feel comfortable, as always, recede in range tactically, so that then we can deal with the problem and start moving forward again. But for me, if I'm in this position doing this float passing or loose passing, as he tries to reach under, I'm going to start looking at immediately forming chest-to-chest -chest connection, breaking their alignment, and moving to pressure-based passing.